Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on listing combinations. Now let's look at the keywords starting with combination. In mathematics a combination is a selection of items from a collection such that the order of the selection does not matter unlike permutations. So let's look at a question and see if we can determine why it is important to list combinations. In this question it states here is a menu. Customers can only pick one starter and then one main. We're asked to list all the combinations from this menu. Why don't you give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start with a salad as our starter. Now this could be followed by chicken pie, or we could have a salad followed by fish pie, or we could start with a soup followed by a chicken pie, or a soup followed by a fish pie. Here you can see we have four different combinations of having one starter and then one main. Now you'll notice we followed an organized strategy, starting with salad. But you may have decided to start with soup and then chicken pie, soup and then fish pie, and then done salad and chicken pie and salad with fish pie. It does not really matter, as long as you've identified your four combinations. Whichever approach you use, the outcomes of an event can be listed in an organized or systematic way to ensure that none of our possible outcomes are missed out. This is called systematic listing and it's a method of listing our outcomes of an event in an organized and systematic way. This is to make sure that none of our possible outcomes are missed out. So let's have a look at another question. Here the question states this is a lock to a door. To open the door, it has three differing letter combinations. We need to list all the possible combinations. Why don't you give it a go and press pause if you need. Firstly, Let's devise a system starting with our letter X. Now X could be followed with Z and then followed by Y. Or starting with X, we could have it followed by Z and then finally followed by C. So you can see we have two outcomes beginning with X and followed by Z. Now let's start with our letter X but followed by Y. Here you could see we could have a Z or we could have our letter C. Starting with X again, it could be followed by C, followed by Z, or starting with X followed by C, and then followed by Y. You can see all our combinations where we started with the letter X. Now let's start with the letter Z. Well, we could have Z followed by X, then Y, Z followed by X, and then C, or Z followed by Y, and then X, Z followed by Y and then C, or Z followed by C and then X, and Z followed by C and then Y. You can see a systematic way of listing our outcomes starting with the letter Z. Now let's look at our letter Y, followed by X then Z, X then C. Then we could have Y followed by Z and X, or Y, Z and C, or Y, C and X, and Y, C and Z. Here you can see all our combinations starting with Y. Lastly, we could begin our first combination with C, then X, followed by C, then Z, then lastly followed by C, then Y. You can see our systematic approach starting with the letter C. Overall, you can see our very organized method of listing all our outcomes, ensuring no possible outcomes are missed out. Now let's have a look at our second part to our question. It states that we need to write the probability of getting the correct combination on our first guess. Well, given we have 24 different combinations, 
the probability of opening our door on our first guess is 1 out of 24. Now let's have a look at our last question. Here we have two piles of cards. We play a game with a friend. The cards in each pile are turned over. In order to win the game, we must score greater than 10 when adding one card from pile 1 and one card from pile 2. We must work out the probability that we will win the first game. Why don't you give it a go and press pause if you need. Well, let's adopt a systematic approach, starting with our number 7. Well, we could pick a 7 from our first pile, followed by a 2 in our second pile. This gives us a total of 9. Or, starting with our 7, we could get an 8. Or we could start with a 7 and then get a 4. This approach is used to identify all our combinations, starting with a 7. Now let's have a look at our starting number being 2. Well, we could get a 2 followed by a 2, or a 2 followed by an 8, or a 2 followed by a 4. Now let's have a look at our starting number being 9. Well, we could get a 9 and a 2, or a 9 and an 8, or a 9 and a 4. Lastly, let's look at our starting number being 5. Well, we could get a 5 and then a 2, or a 5 and then an 8, or a 5 and then a 4. Here you can see our 12 different combinations. So let's work out the probability that we'll win the game. Well, we only win the game when the score is greater than 10. So looking at all our scores which are greater than 10, we have 15, 11, 11, 17, 13 and 13. Therefore, the probability of winning the first game is 6 out of our 12, which then can be cancelled down to a half. So, overall, in order to effectively list all the combinations, it's important to have an organised and systematic approach, so that no outcome is missed out. In listing combinations, we can identify all our outcomes and then we can work out a probability. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.